started yet. Hi, everybody. It's Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, Chit Chat Shop. We are here with our guest, Laura Hawkins from Kula Media Partners. She is the Director of Digital Marketing. That's right. Nailed it. How's it going? Good, good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you. Thank you for coming. Uh, what are we making tonight? We are making um, chicken with red curry paste. Yeah. I thought that that might be a nice take on um, something a little bit different for winter comfort food. I think people think of this time of year, it's like chilly month. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to think of some things that have a little more flavor maybe and a little bit, you know, different than your kind of typical stews and still whatever. Has that so kind of stewy yeah, stew. but still has that kind of comfort and warmth. So I'm excited, especially looking at uh, those the lovely chilies. chilies you have there. All right, so this isn't going to take too long. So before we start this, uh, tell us about what you do at Kula Partners. So at Kula Partners, like you said, I'm a director of digital marketing. Um, I head up the marketing team there and I'm responsible for developing strategy uh, for our clients, which we have clients that are local, clients across North America. Um, they come to me to help them sol solve their marketing uh, challenges. So that's a little so bit of what, like what I do. Social media marketing and stuff like that? It really covers the gamut of just about everything. Um, I could start with, you know, developing uh, a new website for a client and thinking about, you know, what is the content that should be on that site? Who are the people um, that are, are, are buying from you? So actually developing gotcha. um, what we call in the, in the industry buyer personas, which is essentially like target market research. Um, and a lot of times we start with developing a strategy which entails what are the different channels that you should focus on? What are the tactics uh, that you should I guess, um, invest in, in order to meet your objectives. So it can include social media, it could include paid social, email, uh, blogging, it can, Just everything. anything that's digital. <laughs> gotcha. so, so it's, it's tailored to your clients, right? So you wouldn't correct. recommend that every client be on every platform and so how do you decide what platforms are right for what client? Typically, we start by, um, it, it It always goes back to who the customers are, mm -hmm. um, as well as, and you where know. where the eyeballs are. Exactly, and um, also, you know, kind of what the, the current state of, of a client is, and then, you know, what they're looking to achieve. So for example, if a client, um, just uh, to pick an example off the top of my head, in more of like a B2B space, uh, they don't maybe have a lot of website traffic today. Uh, they really yeah, want to. to business they <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I started, it's like, the, yeah, you can be my de jargonator. Let me know. <laughs> Stop me anytime. Yeah. Good. That was good. That was good. Um, <laughs> actually, going co completely off topic, on the PodCamp talk that I did last week, I was. You know, I was like, afterwards, my mom attended. I was like, oh, what did you think? And she was like, well, I didn't know what ROI was. And one of my slides was talking about how bad it was to use jargon and how to simplify everything. But so, yeah, Return ROI, on investment. I know. OK, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's cook. Awesome. So, oh, hey, Mia. Hey, hey everyone. Caitlin. Thank you for joining. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sarah. So we're going to make. Uh, our own red curry paste. So often when people make uh, Thai curry at home, they'll buy the jar of red curry paste. Uh, and generally it's pretty good. Uh, we're gonna make our own because it's more fun, you get more flavor, and it doesn't have shrimp paste in it, and Ben's allergic to shrimp. That's not something we wanna do on live. We don't wanna. EpiPen! We've had a lot of things I'm happen ready. on Chit Chat Shop. That's not one of the ones we want. Um, so there's a whole bunch of ingredients in this. We have coriander, cumin, we have peppercorns, garlic, uh, chilies, brown sugar, ginger, which traditionally would be gaganelle, but I couldn't find any. It's like a family of ginger. Uh, we're gonna put some lime zest in. We have some lemongrass. We have fish sauce, onion, and we're going to use the roots of cilantro. Oh. Okay, so, because that's what the recipe calls for, Patty. Versus the leaf. Already, we've been we're four minutes in and Patty's already on me, great. <laughs> Um, so is there like a bingo for this? There like should be. Jargon. We should have a bingo. Patty. <laughs> Everybody at home watching, somebody make a bingo. Uh, okay. Hi, Alan. Uh, how are you? How comfortable are you with knives? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> do you really want me to answer that? No. Um, I'm comfortable with knives. Like. Okay. So. I'm no you, Dexter, but you know. All right. 
Are you comfortable cutting I have an dexterity. onion? Dexterity. For example. Yes, I'm very comfortable okay. cutting an onion. So you cut Put me to onion. work. Just rough dice. We're gonna blitz it in here so it doesn't have to be perfect. I only need half of it. Okay. Okay. Great. When you're doing that, I'm going to peel some ginger. Sounds good. Okay. So you uh, you travel all around Nova Scotia. And yes. kind of, you travel a lot, eh? We try. Um, I, I guess maybe I'll, I'll preface this with last, the summer before last, um, beautiful summer, uh, but, but we ended up spending most of it playing Pokemon Go and drinking on patios and then realized that we didn't make it to the beach once. We only made it camping once. And so this past summer and year, we made a bit of a resolution, I suppose, to try to make more of um, an enjoying the beautiful province. So of course, summer is a pretty epic time to do that. So we really just made a point of sitting down and plotting out um, places that we wanted to see, which was not hard to come by. Um, one really great thing I would say, kind of in the age of social media, is it's so easy to find inspiration from other folks that have been to places that look beautiful and um, that really kind of a basis of a bit of a, a checklist for us and so really over the summer we uh, on most weekends would try to what? you're freaking me out with what your hands <laughs> am i yeah oh yeah oh you are killing me stop 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 <laughs> you cut your fingers off this is crazy okay sorry <laughs> onion duty has Do been Taken away. No, I'm just gonna show you. So, if you keep the root on your onion and you're dicing it, yeah, we'll hold it together. Fingers up so you don't cut yourself. Yeah. Hold your knife in like a tight kind of forward grip, so it's like uh, playing baseball. You choke up on the bat so you get more control. Okay. And then you're gonna make some downward slices. He that sounded that looked like scarier than what I thought I was doing. If the fingers, if your knife is always in contact with your fingers, yeah, you know where it is. If your knife and your fingers are like this and your knife slips, it's going into your thumb or it's going into your index finger, you're gonna lose the tip. Yep. This way, your fingers are always behind the blade and you are always in contact with the knife so you always know where it is. And then you just turn your onion and dice like that. I mean, that was a lot smoother than I was doing for <laughs> sure. I don't think I have that level of comfort, but. You said you were good with a knife. Well, I love that so far. I, I don't know if you've seen the show, but most of it's just me making fun of the guests. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. You can finish. Just be careful with your fingers. If you hold them like that, and then they're slips, you're going to lose them. I was like just like splaying my you're fingers. You're pretty much like, like this. <laughs> I was doing the knife game. Exactly. No. <laughs> okay, you fine. You're known for cursing, not cutting your fingers. Exactly. Off. Fair. So back to your story. Um. Oh, yeah. So rather than spend our entire summer drinking on patios and playing Pokemon Go, now that that's kind of over... We're visiting a lot of different places. Um, some highlights, I would say. Um, thank you. Would have to be, I think we discovered some pretty fantastic places that you don't necessarily always have to travel all that far to find. For example, um, just actually not too far away from here are a series of trails um, kind of in the Kearney Lake area. Yep. Um, and one in particular is pretty incredible. It's called the Hobson Lake Loop. Um, highly recommend that for, even if you just want to take a picnic at night, um, grab some food, head back to the lake. It's like a 15 minute walk in, set up maybe with a bottle of wine. I don't know. It's not, I don't think that's compliant with liquor laws, but like. <laughs> no one else is out there. Exactly, no one else is out there and some sushi or something is set up and like that is just amazing and so nice to be able to do um especially in the summer when you have lots of daylight and that's like 10 minutes from downtown and it's gorgeous there are, it, like on the hobson lake side there's like a little look off and almost like a waterfall a mini waterfall oh, nice. incredible and if you kept going um through that loop um you can also access it from the other side if you want a, a shorter hike but is um Fox Lake, which again has a different gorgeous look off and some nice trails um, right around the lake. So that's an example of somewhere a little closer, but if you want to go on a little bit more of a day trip or camping trip, um, we, I mean, people know about Five Islands, 
recently kind of redid the space. There's some beautiful hiking trails on um, the campground, but even, um, oh my goodness, what was the name of the waterfall? It's kind of more towards um, Parsboro. Yeah, Hidden Falls, incredible. It was, if you look it up, you can find it on, um, I think is it maybe all trails or trail peak. Okay. And you just basically pull off the side of the road, like half an hour from um, uh, Five Islands Provincial Park, walk uh, along. It's a beautiful park too. Incredible, yeah. yes. And the tides, the tides, so beautiful. Um, but this waterfall, if it, it's, I think we have a few pictures of it on Instagram, but it's like a four series waterfall just out of this world. Crazy. Um, and you can swim in it. The pools. Yeah. Do you have uh, like a favorite place in the province? Maybe. Yes. So we gotta put me to work. We gotta take our limes out. You trust me with the knife again, yeah. or what's up? Yes, you're All right, I'm back in the. So we're just gonna scrape back. as much of the white stuff off as we can. Okay. Okay. Because it's very bitter. Yeah, it's very bitter. It's very so, the sorry, technical where is your part. Favorite? I mean, there are so many. There's so many beautiful places, but I have a really soft spot for Cape Breton. Okay. Um, the last couple of years we've visited there in the fall. Um, my grandmother, who might be watching, I don't know if she's watching, That's if Mona, Mona Hawkins, if she, she actually introduced me to Cape Hi, Breton. Nanny Hawkins. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you originally from? I'm originally from Halifax. Oh, okay. Um, but she introduced me to Cape Breton. She's from Shetta Camp originally, and she took me there in the fall a couple of years ago. And it was just, I'd never really been to Cape Breton, and it was just it's such a beautiful, beautiful a, place. It was a mind blowing experience. And with the, the foliage and the landscape, um, so ever since that, we've gone back every fall just to see the, like, see the foliage, um, hike. But the, the thing is, is that there's still so many places there that I haven't visited that I would like to, like some of the waterfalls there, like Egypt Falls looks amazing. We haven't been there. A um, couple Never other heard of that. Egypt Falls. Okay, check it out. Check it out. It's like um, it's a pretty like wide falls. It's big. It's pretty substantial. Um, and there's another place. What is it called? It's not. There's Meat Cove. Um, but there's another place. Some friends went and they. It's like um. I think a, almost like an 8K hike back, um, and they did some backcountry camping, but where you hike to in the summer, there are horses, like someone just lets their horses oh, kind of I've live there. Oh, I've heard of this. There. Yeah. It's, up, it's up in the highlands, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Thanks, Mike. You're not the guest yeah. tonight. <laughs> Stay out of it. <laughs> He's corroborating the story. No, Mike. It is fantastic there. And then me and Boss, he has a friend who's uh, from Colorado who came here in the summer, trout loggers. He's uh, uh, loves Cape Breton. Loves Cape Breton. Uh, I just want to say to Mike, so I had an idea where I want you to just sit in a chair over in the corner, and every once in a while we'll cut to you, and all you're doing is listing all the businesses you're involved in. <laughs> That's it, for the whole show. I and it goes you, on forever. I miss you in my heart. Is that uh, enough white yeah, of it fine. being it's taken fine. off? This is TV food. It's fine. Okay. Um, how? <laughs> TV how dinner. Get out your tray. And how spicy are you? Like, how spicy do you want this? I mean, and be aware, because I've had guests say, "Oh, I'm awesome with spice," and then I made it really spicy. And who, who was uh, it? Uh, True North DJ oh, Scott. Yeah, and he his face melted off. So how spicy do you want it? <laughs> well, I mean. I mean hot, but not hot TNT. It is. No, you said hot. We're gonna go hot. Some so like it hot. I'm gonna put three. I got three. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So in here, I'll take that guy. Great. In here we have. You can look if you want. We I did kind of want to look. Garlic. Oh my god, that smells we have, incredible. A uh, couple roots of coriander. Uh, we have lime zest. We have chilies. We have onion. We have cumin coriander. I don't know. Fish sauce. We gotta put some fish sauce. Do you ever use fish Not sauce? Not shrimp. Not shrimp. So this is, uh, oh, this isn't actually squid brand. So most, there's a, a brand of fish sauce called squid brand, and it doesn't contain any squids, which I always oh. thought was hilarious. Squid it's brand a trick. fish sauce, no squids. Uh, so Thai cuisine, Thai, this is Thai fish sauce. Um, 
And what's weird is most times. Oh, okay. Most <laughs> times when you use fish sauce, you only use like a couple of drops. But when you actually use it in Thai food, they use quite a bit of it, even though it's a super powerful flavor. Uh, so we that's have a trick that I'll sometimes, if I'm making spaghetti sauce or chili or anything that's kind of savory, put a little of that in. Uh, really good in chowders and stuff, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you put that in chowder? Yeah, just a drop. Really? Yep. Because it, it just adds that, like... Umami. Yeah, and that, like, little bit of fishiness. Oh, look. look at her going on. <laughs> It's gonna be loud, Adam. That's not we'll get loud. the. We'll lean the mic away. I don't have a big mortar and pestle, or I would cut it. I only have like a medium-sized one, because traditionally this would be done in a mortar yep. and pestle. Good bicep workout. Hmm. Good bicep workout. It is a good bicep workout. So we're just gonna make sure this is blitz. We might have to add a little oil to loosen it. So, how did you get into digital marketing? I um, I. I guess classical training or education was in um, public relations, and uh, but a lot of times those the two fields are intermixed. Yeah. And um, my first couple of jobs outside of, out of school were kind of communications and marketing, um, but there was I, I guess kind of at a time when social media was sort of new and it was just assumed uh, by your employer it's like well you know how to do social media because you're of that age so that kind of actually didn't end up working out up too bad at um the jobs that i had prior to kula um you started about 10 years ago uh six years six ago years. at kula um which is still it feels like kind of a long time i don't know especially in this yeah you know market and what have you but um uh yeah, I guess I, I was working a bit in, in digital before, but really kind of honed my skills there, just being kind of more focused on that almost exclusively gotcha. um, with those guys. But uh, overall, it's kind of an interesting time, I think, to be in digital in Halifax, um, even recently recruiting for a position and just kind of seeing what else is out there. There's quite a bit of demand for people who have experience in digital uh, in Halifax and a good number of um, even you know our firm but other kind of agencies or even a handful of client side uh, instances like even when you think of the tech and startup community in that where there like I said is, is more of a demand really, for that I think there's a much bigger like kind of tech and startup community here than people realize for sure it, exactly yeah. exactly so even as I was uh, recruiting and kind of seeing like well what else is on the market looking for people with the same you know couple years experience with the platforms we have so on and so forth and the track record and it's actually pretty stiff so I would basically probably suggest to anyone who's interested in marketing to try to double down on those skills because, and especially if you want to stay in Halifax and because I think I mean part of my like spiel um, is always that there is such a good work-life balance here mm -hmm. I mean it's kind of life is always kind of what you make it but if you're someone that loves uh, you know the outdoors and um, even like just being a younger person here and the food and drink scene, how much it's changed even in five years. It's, it's, it's like, changed a lot in five years. It's, it's insane. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I think there's kind of a perception for, you know, folks that maybe want to work in digital that maybe you have to move to a bigger city like Toronto or whatever to make a go of it. But I think that if you want to stay here um, because you see kind of the other perks potentially of living here, that there are actually, um, there is a good career to be made uh, here in digital, which is encouraging. And Mona Hawkins is watching, by the way. Oh, awesome. Hey, Nana. <laughs> so. Mike Taylor says, Lauren is infinitely better at this meat part than I was. <laughs> Mike, you did a great job. Don't let anybody tell you different. And Ben, uh, he said Ben's spicy level has increased, and I love it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, it's the spicy food. Yes. So the RoboCoop did not do a very good job of this, so I'm just going to. Yep. MacGyver it. Don't you know? <laughs> what? MacGyver is the word of the night. That's going. I'm just trying to not get it in my eyes. That'll be bad news. Okay, that's enough. Cry on camera? Oh, it wouldn't one be the, tear. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> we, had, we had a bunch of kids in here one day. I was pretty much just bawling the whole time. <laughs> get me out of here, yeah. <laughs> So one of the 
secrets of cooking Thai food uh, is generally with most cuisines you would add the spice kind of later. With Thai food you want to cook it first uh, and that's how you develop like, this really kind of unique Thai flavor. So we're going to put Ooh. a couple tablespoons of that in there. Oh my god, that smells so good. And this is totally something I've cooked before. It is not. <laughs> so we have some chicken thighs, which I prefer they have more fat in them and a deeper flavor. Agreed. And I keep lighting my towel on fire. It's actually the burning towel you smell. That's it. <laughs> burning fabric. Laura, can you chop those up for me, please? Oh my God, this is a this is the real test. Nice. Can I just crush them? You have them? thirty seconds. So if you just so if you find like that balance point in your knife and pinch it between your thumb and your index finger, and then you find the counterbalance point, and then you're gonna. Have you ever played drums before? You no. look like you played drums. No. Before. no. Okay, cool. So <laughs> it's kind of like a drum <laughs> stick. I'm gonna use the analogy anyway. Uh, where you're gonna bounce it, so it's kind of hitting your palm and bouncing off, and then you're having so one finger is all you really need to find that counterbalance point. Yeah, pretty much. This is not graceful. Yeah. <laughs> the peanut gallery. <laughs> That's too punny. Do I get extra points for puns? If you weren't in digital marketing, what would you be doing? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping for retirement 35. Uh, <laughs> probably somewhere on a beach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I've always had a bit of um, a passion for... I guess, um, active living. And there was a time when I considered um, going, it, like maybe making a career change and pursuing um, uh, nutrition and personal training. Okay. And then things were pretty good at my job and I decided not to do it. So it's more, I guess, is there something to be said for keeping your kind of personal interests and work separate? I don't know. They kind of, they'll blend together, but, uh, I think if I weren't doing what I was do what I'm doing now, that's what I would be doing. Okay, that checks out. Okay, so we have this Galen, which is probably not how you pronounce it. Uh, it is a Chinese broccoli. Adam, where's the camera? Where are we at? You see the little guy right there, the little broccoli. I'm just gonna cut this up. We'll take off these thicker the stems. The stalk, yeah. Just the thicker one. So what we could do with this, and you can do this with broccoli as well, is peel it. And then you can put it in stir fries and stuff, and it's almost like a water chestnut. So if you cut that up, oh. you get that crispiness. But for right now, we're just going to cut them off. And then we're just going to take this and just kind of rough chop. Okay? Cool. Did, you, did you grow up around food, like being important in your house? Um, yes. I mean, I have to take my hats off to my mom because she did just about everything and working full time and running my brother and I to sports. So we didn't cook a ton from scratch at home. Um, but I mean, I like to eat. So maybe the, that kind of ends up going hand in hand. So you kind of, you find a way. Um, how about you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely grew up cooking. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I feel like I was always a kid that wanted to like do stuff early so I'd always try to like cook for myself mm -hmm. when I was at home and try my hand at it. My uh, middle sister and I once weren't happy with the dinner my mother had cooked and I was uh, probably six or seven and she always had a saying where if you didn't like the food you could go to a different restaurant. Yep. Um, so we decided to make our own food and the rest terrible. is history. Oh. Yeah, horrendous. <laughs> My sister had to sit at the table for like six hours until she ate it all. Oh my god. This is how you learn. I was a super cute kid, so I got away with it. I just walked away. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Hi, Cassie. Like silence happened. 
Uh, okay, so this is almost done. Uh, I put some coconut, the fat from the coconut milk in first, a couple tablespoons, just cook that down, and then I added the milk. We're gonna cook that down a bit. Uh, then we're gonna add this stuff. This actually looks pretty good, I'm excited. Actually, it looks pretty actually. good. Actually. This, this is the first time I've ever made this because cool. most Thai curry pastes have shrimp in them, so I don't usually eat a lot of Thai food. Fair. Well, that's fun. Get to take you out of the comfort exactly. zone maybe a little. Way better than cookies. Mike? Was that what you guys made Mike, as the Mike dish? Mike cookies, yeah. I don't like... <laughs> I wouldn't have even thought of that. I don't like baking. Baking is terrible. Everybody knows that already, though. See, cooking and baking are so different. Like, I'm not a baker either, but I find what it's because this? I like to... Exp what was I not allowed to put that in? Giant stocks in here. Oh my god. Oh, you're okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're not fired yet. No, we'll edit that this out. This is Chef Ramsay. At 100%. 100% it's your fault. Get a. You could have a super superpower in the world. What superpower would you want? That's really difficult. Um. Now I'm gonna get really introspective and think way out all of the different okay, options so the and the, um, I mean, maybe the ability to see the future, but as I say that, it's like, do I really want to? I don't know, maybe it's better not to know. Maybe it's better to be in ignorant bliss. I don't know, or flying, that would be kind of cool. Huh? Superpower uh, of choice. Uh, another superpower, because you already have. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that we was didn't start power. the fire. It was always burning. Uh, I think super speed. Super speed. Yeah. Definitely super speed. I'd be invisible. And we all know like the pervy reasons cloak. why. Yeah. <laughs> the voyeuristic. Woo. Oh, that's a good call. Ooh. But you always, sometimes you don't want to know you, what someone's thinking. You need to be able to turn thinking. it off. Yeah, 100%. It has to be able to turn it off. Okay, so this actually tastes pretty delicious. And I'm not just saying that. Or maybe I am, who knows. Uh, we'll so be we the judge of that. Rice that I cooked earlier. I hope you guys are hungry. When we decided to do the show, we never really thought of the time and whether people were actually going to want to eat at 9 o'clock or not. I'm always down to eat. That looks bomb. Smells good too. Yeah, it smells really good. If you can get over the. <laughs> throw it. No. I gotta clean this up. I'm not throwing anything. The actually. Actually. Always the actually. Smells so good. The only other time this walk is made in. Uh, wow. Uh, appearance, not experience. The old, uh, never mind. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna stop talking now and just serve. <laughs> I think the uh, I think the cold drugs are starting to kick in. And just in time. Am I still? On, I smell burning towels still. It's it's smoking a little. Um, oh, that's why. Yeah, it's definitely still smoking. <laughs> oh God, am I like igniting it more? Oh my Don't God. fan it. Our first fire. <laughs> oh my God, amazing. Baby's first kitchen fire. <laughs> okay. I don't have enough forks. We knew your, your episode was going to be memorable. Awesome. It's for you. I'll grab some more forks. Yum. Please eat it. I was like, I wanted to wait for, for, for you. So, it's pretty good. Adam, oh, that's bomb. For you. Oh, bomb's the word of the night. Bomb. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. I forgot to put fresh laundry on it. Everybody stop eating. <laughs> Boom! I'm okay. I'm not a cilantro fan. No? Okay. Thank you. Isn't that funny? The cilantro is so polarizing. Are you I team know. cilantro? 100%. Same. It's like my favorite herb. I guess yeah, it's no, a I, genetic. I hardly do cilantro. Mm. It's a genetic. They say that, but. 
Oh, I forgot the peanut stew. God damn it. Oh my gosh, man, you're not on your game. It's the cold medication. So, Thank you. I used to find that cilantro tasted soapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And perfumey. But then I just kept eating it. And then you got over it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's actually genetic because I was able to get over it. And you can too in five easy steps. <laughs> My friend's cooking jobs. We had a, a cook that did the staff lunch every day and they were all Spanish. And it was in everything. Every dish, every rice dish. Every, it, was, it was insane. Like, couldn't eat staff meal like after about three months. I was like, I can't do it. I can't that, eat more cilantro. Yeah. Yeah, no. That's about it, eh? Yeah. Anything you want yeah. to throw out to the world? Um, thank you for having me and for everyone who watched. Thanks this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been awesome. And I get to eat the meal we cooked. It's even better. Underneath you, it says your handle, so you can like this. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like, I like follow that. Me. The, what? Um, follow Kula. Uh, stay tuned for digital marketing adventures. Um, over the upcoming year, we're going to be hosting some different digital marketing events um, at our headquarters. So if you're interested in networking, learning more about digital, um, definitely keep an eye out for those. Yeah, free beer and wine and a nice view of Citadel Hill. Hell yeah, come on down. Um, keep an eye out for that, so follow me, and then um, for updates on that, we'll be launching some dates in the coming weeks. Um, and yeah, thank you again for having me. Thank you for this coming. This is a blast. Thanks for coming. All right, so did you want to do something before we did that? We'll just say that we have a closed chit-chat shop. We just oh, come watch Adam wants me to tell you about this fancy closed <laughs> chit-chat shop group we have, which is super exclusive, and you can't be a it's member, except everybody can be a member. <laughs> um, what do they have to do? Just have to ask to be in. Yeah, so beg, turn around three times. So give us a bunch of money and you can be in it, okay? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Seriously, they'll give us some money and you can go in it. Um, but really, just ask Adam. He'll put you in it, I think. You can put people in it. I can. I can okay, you you're, you're okay, so we always end the show the same way. <laughs> show always ends the same way. Have you seen the ending of the show yet? Awesome. I don't know. Oh, she doesn't know what she's Okay, so we always end the show the same way by saying chit chat chop five times fast. Oh, we try and end the show the same way by saying chit chat chop five times fast. Okay. You gotta eat on this too. So Adam's gonna count us in. Yeah, come over here. You wanna introduce yourself actually since you've been standing over here? Sure. Uh, I'm Brett Donald. Laura's uh, better half. <laughs> no other identity. He has no other identity. <laughs> Alright, Adam's gonna count us in and we say chit chat chop five times fast. Okay. Yep. Three, two, one. Chicha chop, chicha chop, chicha chop, chicha chop, chicha chop, chicha chop. See you next week. Oh, six! I did six too! I was like, I got two in the crew. I was like, we're doing it! We're doing so good! Oh no, mics are hot. I know, what if someone was like really a loud eater and was like, massive eating? Yeah. Smack in the lips. <laughs>